Happy end of December. I should say that I'm also going to be doing an end of year 2014 beauty favorites. I also wanted to do December favorites. I know that sometimes it's a toss up between scrapping December favorites and just doing a year end favorites, but I'm gonna do both <laughs> just because there, I feel like I got a lot of new stuff this month. I mean, who am I kidding? I get a lot of new stuff every month because I have problems, but just some stuff I wanna tell you guys about. So let's get into it. So I always like to start with the most obvious thing, which is my lips, probably. And it's not green. I have issues. Actually, I was just in Folane yesterday, and they're a green beauty boutique in Boston. And I was chatting with one of uh, the girls that works there, and she had a beautiful red lipstick on, and it was a NARS Audacious lipstick. And we sort of... Uh, you know, commiserated about our dedication to green beauty, but our deep penchant for non-green lipsticks. The lipstick I decided to treat myself to this month is a YSL Yves Saint Laurent number 54. And I decided to get this because of Hannah Mags. She did a whole blog post on it and was wearing it in several of her vlogs and it just looked so gorgeous on her. I find that I like it best on me mixed with other things. So I have mixed it with Max Dubonnet and today it's actually mixed with the Bite Beauty lip pencil in Quince. And I just think it's so, it brings kind of like a purple undertone to whatever you're wearing, which is kind of perfect for the top that I'm wearing. But I just also like the packaging is gorgeous. Everything about it's beautiful. I don't have anything like this in my collection and it's a favorite. I'm not saying go out and buy it because it's not a green product, but you know, if you love luxe expensive lipsticks, then life is short. That's what I say. So I ordered this YSL lipstick from Barney's and Along with that order, I decided to replace my 10-year-old Shoot Umira eyelash curler. What video did I mention this in already? I think it was my holiday makeup tutorial video. I decided to get the Kevin Aquan eyelash curler because I had heard very good things about it. I do have um, quite large eyes, so it's a challenge for me to find an eyelash curler that will fit all of my lashes in it. and. This little beauty does the frickin' trick. You can get so close to the base of the lashes and pump it a couple times, and I just feel like it gives a, an absolutely gorgeous curl uh, to the lashes. So I'm really, really happy with this. Here's to another 10-year relationship with an eyelash curler. Next is something that I demoed in my Get Ready With Me video, which I ordered this early in the month. It's the Gressa Minimalist Corrective Serum Foundation, and I have it in shade number two. I've heard so much about this. Of course, it got a huge rave on No More Dirty Looks, but also just like in the green beauty community more generally, a lot of people have been talking about just how amazing it is for color correcting as a liquid to powder foundation. And I am not a foundation wearer at all. I never have been. My main concern is just that my skin is dry and I do get kind of red and flushed. I have a lot of pink in my skin. So I need something that's going to kind of counteract the pink and even everything out. This is some powerful stuff. You need literally one to three drops at most. And I've been mixing it with a CC cream. I'm loving this. I'm loving everything about Gress's company. Her whole approach is something that jives with me, which is basically you need a very small arsenal of high quality, high pigmented, high performing products. And you basically look effortlessly glamorous and beautiful without really wearing very much at all. So. I needed to replace my Sech Vite nail polish top coat. I am an avid nail polish wearer. My nails are painted in most of my videos. And the ones that, the videos that my nails are not painted in, I'm always like, oh, it like pains me to see my nails not painted. And I needed a new top coat. The Sech Vite is amazing. I'm sure some of you watching this have probably used it. It gives a very glass-like appearance to the nails and it helps the nail polish dry quite quickly. I decided to go with the Shiswai lacquer in I think it's called awesome yeah so it's just their top coat and I'm not sure if you can use it as a base coat as well and this came I asked someone either on Instagram or Facebook or something for an all-natural top coat recommendation 
and this was recommended. I do really like it. The first couple times I used it, I didn't, I mean, and I'm wearing it now over the manicure that I have, but at first I was like, oh, it doesn't give that same super shiny glass-like appearance as Such Vite does. I think it might be a step below in terms of glossy finish, but it is so much more chip resistant than the Such V. I don't, I feel like I literally had a polish on, it wasn't this, I can't even remember what polish it was. I didn't have any chips for eight days, seven or eight days. That's virtually unheard of people. I mean, come on. I just think that in terms of the strength of it and how it extends the life of a manicure, it's freaking awesome. Next is a product called Cloud of Protection. I don't know if any of you have heard of this. I had stumbled across it when I was in my glory days of writing my dissertation and distracting myself by piling hundreds of dollars worth of beauty products into a beauty habit car and then clicking out of the browser. I've admitted this in previous videos. Um, but this is a, a brand that I had found through the Beauty Habit website. And it's an all natural product. It's basically an aromatherapy spray. So it says, and this is just a small travel size, I think it's one ounce, and it comes in a bigger jar too. It's defense against illness, bad vibes, and stinkiness. And the brand is called Nieves, N I E V E S. And it says, this formula contains essential oils that fight airborne bacteria and viruses traditionally used to clear negativity and cleanse the space. So you're just supposed to spray your personal space and self for protection that lingers. I typically will spray it around my bedroom, in my bathroom, in the living room. I don't tend to take it with me. Um, it stays at my house. They also recommend sort of like if you're about to ride the subway or you're in an office environment and you just kind of want to keep your personal space and aura free of pathogens. So I think if you're placing an order on Beauty Habit and you want to throw something into your cart to like tip it over to the free shipping or something, then this is like something really cool to check out. Of course I have something to talk about from the Pettivore shop. What video on La More La Musique would it be without a Pettivore <laughs> recommendation? And of course it's from one of my favorite brands. This is one of my favorite discoveries I have made this year. It's the Earth Body Sacred Skin Care Dream Body Oil. Again, all of their products are formulated from an Ayurvedic standpoint, and even the oils that they use in this, like it's got sweet almond oil and safflower oil and a bunch of different essential oils. Um, it has mugwort in it, sandalwood, lavender, frankincense, Roman chamomile, and rosewood. It says, Dream is a gentle body oil designed to enhance mental clarity and restore moisture handcrafted in San Francisco, no animal testing, vegan, you know, the drill. I want literally my entire bathroom to be stocked with Earth Body Sacred skincare products. I am obsessed. Okay, I'm just gonna give a quick little shout out to this absolutely stunning kit of luxuriousness because I already did a video on every product in here. It's the Infior Recovery Skincare Set and I did a video demoing all of the items that come in here. There's two sort of cleansing uh, oils and emulsions, and then there's a serum, a face oil, a balm, and a toner. And you can get these sort of a discovery kit, as it's called. It's basically like deluxe samples. You can get them in, I think, three different for three different skin types. And I got the one for dry slash mature skin because I have incredibly dry and dehydrated skin. But it's an incredible brand. I've been loving it this month, and if you want to know more about it, then I'll link the video where I demo all of the products in an evening skincare routine below in the description box. Um, my favorite book this month has been this book on Ayurvedic skincare. It's called Absolute Beauty. If you watched my Me Time tag video, I quickly mentioned this. But if you have any kind of skincare interest slash obsession the way that I do from a more holistic standpoint, then this is the read for you. <laughs> it's um, a wonderful resource and it kind of, as someone that's interested in all forms of holistic lifestyles, this is just kind of another addition to, you know, your concerned about the skin, but it really has so much to do with your entire being and it all gets reflected through your skin. So there's quite a strong emphasis on larger spiritual principles without really labeling it as such, but Ayurveda itself, it's basically like a lifestyle prescription. It's not just 
you know, the way that we think of in Western culture and Western medicine, you take a pill or you put a cream on and it's supposed to fix a symptom. And this obviously is a completely different philosophy. It even has me Googling holistic esthetician schools, which is kind of like a pipe dream of mine that I would love to do someday if I didn't really feel like I needed to use my PhD to do something, uh, I don't know, academic. But there actually is, there's a, I found a school in Denver called the School of Botanical and Medical Aesthetics, and they have a 600 hour holistic esthetician training and licensure program. And I'm like, oh man, how can I freaking move to Denver and make that happen <laughs> someday? While there are no favorite TV shows or YouTube channels this month, I do have a favorite new Instagram account. Do you guys follow the Fat Jewish? <laughs> I, like, one of my girlfriends, like, recently turned me on to him. It's, like, super politically incorrect, highly offensive posts about pretty much everything. Like, one of my favorite, like, the very first one I saw and I was just, like, laughing so much. I'm gonna show it to you. It's also, like, his captions that he puts on the under the pictures are like, they're just really funny. This was my, the very first one I saw. I don't know if it'll pick up in the camera. Remember when Kimmy K looked like Jafar from Aladdin, hashtag 2005. I don't know, this shit just like cracks me up. So if I need a good laugh, I'll scroll through the fat Jewish and um, feel better about life. And then just a couple of music favorites. I'm going to pull up on my phone what I've been digging this month. I had a huge, or am having, I should say, a huge moment with a pretty old school DJ producer called DJ Sprinkles. I realize it's a completely horrible name. It sounds like it would be like really a really cheesy artist, but and I, I need to avoid using a pronoun to describe DJ Sprinkles because... He or she is a transgendered person, and I'm not sure the correct pronoun to refer to DJ Sprinkles. So we're just gonna call this DJ DJ Sprinkles. You can go Google it and look it up if you're curious more about what I mean. So, My so favorite songs are, oh God, I die. Um, it's a track called Food of Love, the DJ Sprinkles Deeper Rama remix, and the track is originally by Hard Ton. I don't even know who that is, but the remix is so good. I actually did a little Instagram clip of this track because I love it so much. And there's a couple others. The Motor City Drum Ensemble remix of Grand Central Part 1 by DJ Sprinkles is also super bomb. I'll link the YouTube videos to all these down below. This is very kind of classic sounding Deep House not kind of like the more minimal ambient techier stuff that's really popular right now, but it's just like very like synth driven, melodic, beautiful, vibey, not ragey kind of dance music. So I think it would be worth your time to check out if you're interested. And actually DJ Sprinkles is coming to Boston in the middle of January and I'm so freaking excited. <laughs> And then the only other thing that I guess kind of could get a mention is a track by Lovebirds called Give Me a Sign, featuring this really bomb female vocal. Yeah, so I've been loving that track, just kind of like a random throw in that I found when I was doing a little beat port searching. So. Guys, that's it for December favorites. I'll see you guys in my 2014 beauty favorites. Bye.